In today's video we are going to analyze a live trade example in the British pound versus the US dollar in the 30 minute time frame. You will notice that this trade is almost exclusively based on price action reading and the subtle details that exist in the nuances of price. Most traders that look for boxed patterns will usually miss these details, so it's obviously important to learn how to read price organically. We always start the analysis by marking the most obvious price extremes as you can see by the numbers marked in the chart. From number 1 to number 3, we have a very simple market movement that confirms the structure in number 2. In other words, once price broke down the low number 1 to produce low number 3, the high number 2 was rendered a solid market structure. This is not merely arbitrary. There is a logical reason we do this in our methods. When price surpassed low number 1, we interpret that the sellers from number 2 were powerful enough to move the market down a step from 1, and therefore, they represent a strong barrier if buyers attempt to break high number 2. If those sellers from number 2 had failed to break the level from number 1, the interpretation would change, and we would not call number 2 a solid structure. The interesting feature of the price action surrounding solid structures is that we can usually find the moment where the dominant player won the battle against the less dominant player, and this is precisely the moment where price will create a short-term memory that can be exploited by the traders who are paying close attention to the market. Observe that this level we are talking about is different than the absolute market extreme. Right after high number 2, there is a strong bearish candle, and immediately after that, price comes back up near the absolute level. This was a buyer's attempt to surpass high number 2, but it obviously failed. The next events in price action is what determines the contextual story that led to the sell trade you see in the chart. After high number 2, we have a sloping line labeled as pressing motion. If you observe those highs highlighted by this line, you will see there is some sort of pattern in there that indicates there is some force trying to pound the market to the downside. This can be large traders actively trying to bring the market down, but it can also be the unconscious mass of traders who believe this market should cascade to the downside. Either way we can observe the pattern and arrive at the same conclusion. Next to the pressing motion line, we have a horizontal line labeled as turning point line. This line represents the moment where the sellers actually assumed the control and started to produce the suspiciously organized price action that led to the low number 3. Observe that during the pressing motion, price is chaotic, but once price breaks to the downside of the turning point line, it looks like it is free to fall from there. This is the level that is usually engraved in the short-term market memory, and therefore, this is the level that we should pay attention to if price comes back there. After number 3, price rises a little bit without reaching this turning point line, and it starts to create a lateral movement for a few hours. Since buyers don't have any stronger barrier at that point, they are able to move the market up again, but at this time, they are exactly at the turning point line. This is the crossroad that you will find yourself in quite frequently. This is the moment where you have to collect the evidence to decide which of the market players is more dominant. Observe that when price touches the previously established turning point line, it goes down immediately, and at the same time, it breaks the small series of higher lows that was forming in the last four candles. This pattern represents two important things in this situation. It's a confirmation that our turning point line is indeed still part of the short-term market memory, and the breakout of the small series of higher lows tells us that the minor flow might have changed to the downside after meeting the turning point line. Just as a side note, this turning point line in this situation can be called a supply and demand line because it represents a focal point in the chart where large decisions have been made. Another detail that is not so clear in this chart is the hidden divergence between high number 2 and the alleged high number 4. The combination of all these elements creates a narrative that signals the possibility of a short trade opportunity. The sell trade you see in the chart was opened right after the candle 4 broke down the small series of higher lows but remember that this is only the trigger for the trade. It's not a setup. This trigger was used in this situation in light of everything that happened before. This is the good old contextual trading in its full form. Small pieces of evidence without an overarching narrative are meaningless, but if you can find this narrative that we are alluding to, you have a much higher chance of producing a high-quality trade. Another piece of this narrative is the comparison between the strength of the vector from number 2 to number 3, and the vector from number 3 to number 4. 
The movement that led to number three seems to be much more aggressive and decisive, while the movement from three to four had quite a bit of indecision marked by that unusually long lateral movement, which in that context displays the lack of power of buyers. Notice that we can clearly form a bias to the downside by paying attention to these details. The stop loss order for this trade was placed above the alleged high 4, which is our protective barrier, and the target is simply the stop loss multiplied by 3 to gives a 1 to 3 risk reward ratio opportunity. Let's see how this trade idea turned out, and then we will make final comments about this whole situation. Here you can see how the target for the trade was hit. Notice how violently price comes down after meeting the turning point line that displayed the short-term market memory of sellers. Even though buyers were trying to form higher highs and higher lows after 3, they were not as strong as those sellers, and this conclusion could only be made by comparing volatility and the behavior in these key points of price. If you want to learn more about this method of trading, check out the Fractal Flow website available in the video description. There you will find dozens of testimonials from traders who already use the methods, and you will also find detailed information about each of the courses with specific videos and the complete table of contents. If you enjoy these videos, please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving your comment below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos.